Welcome to GetChemistryHealth.com. My name is Dr. Kent. This is going to be a really brief lesson on chemical formulas. Now, a chemical formula is basically a shorthand way of expressing the types of atoms and the number of atoms that are present in a substance. So, for example, one chemical formula you've probably heard of is H2O. So that's the chemical formula for water. Another one you might have heard of is carbon dioxide, is CO2. So these are just shorthand ways that express the type and the number of atoms. Okay, so here's another one. So, so H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. So why don't we just take a second and break this down and try to decipher exactly what this is telling me. Okay, well H, that's telling me, that's the symbol for hydrogen. So there's hydrogen. How many hydrogens? Well, the subscript after the hydrogen tells me there are two hydrogens present. How about S? Well, S is the symbol for the element sulfur. Now, notice there isn't a subscript here. So if there isn't a subscript, we just assume that means there's only one. O, that's the symbol for oxygen, and the subscript is four, so there must be four oxygens. So sulfuric acid is composed of two hydrogen atoms, one sulfur atom, and four oxygen atoms. Well, how about water? Well, water must be two hydrogens and one oxygen. Carbon dioxide must be one carbon and two oxygens. Now, sometimes in a chemical formula, it's useful to use parentheses so we can clarify what's going on with the actual structure or the composition. So, for example, this molecule here is TNT, which is a very famous explosive I'm sure you've heard of. So, TNT is c 7 h 5 parenthesis NO2, parenthesis 3. So these parentheses are trying to set off this NO2 group as being separate. And the subscript outside tells me, well, there are three of the NO2 groups. So the subscript basically multiplies whatever is inside the parentheses. So in our case, let's see, how many carbons do we have? We have seven carbons. We have five hydrogens right here then we have these no2 groups we have three well how many nitrogens are there well we multiply by three whatever is in size so we have three nitrogens how many oxygens are there well again we multiply by three so two times three there must be six oxygens so there you go TNT has seven carbons five hydrogens, three times one, three nitrogens, three times two, six oxygens. Okay, so let's wrap it up with a few examples. The first one says Mg3, parenthesis, PO4, parenthesis two. And the way we would commonly say that, by the way, is Mg3, PO4 taken twice. So we'd say taken for whatever was in parentheses. So Mg3, PO4 taken twice, because of the two here. Okay, so this one has magnesium, that's Mg, has phosphorus, that's P, and it has oxygen, that's the O. Well, how many magnesiums do we have? In this case, there's three magnesiums. How many phosphorus do we have? Well, there's one in every PO4 group, and there's two of those groups. So we would have two phosphorus. How about oxygen? Well, there's four in every PO4 group, and there's two of those. So two times four, we would have eight. So in terms of total atoms, we would have three plus two plus eight. We'd have 13 total atoms in the structure for Mg3 PO4 taken twice. Okay, how about the next one? C2H4 OH taken twice. So we got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen I see present. How many carbons? Well, two. How many hydrogens? Okay, this one's a little sneaky because there's four hydrogens here, but there's more hydrogens in the parentheses. So there's one in the parentheses, but there are two of these groups. So two times one will give me two more. So a total of six hydrogens. How about oxygen? Well, there's one inside the parentheses times two. So two total oxygens. So this would have 10 
total atoms are in C2H4OH taken twice. Okay, last one. Al2S2O3 taken three times. Al2S2O3 taken three times. So we got Al, that's aluminum. We got sulfur, that's S. And we got O, that's oxygen. So how many aluminums? Well, two. How many sulfurs? Well, there's two, but again, it's inside parentheses, so we multiply that by the number outside. So the subscript three times this subscript two gives me six sulfurs. How about oxygens? Well, there's a subscript, subscript three multiply it by this subscript three, so that gives me nine oxygens. So we'd have a total of 17 atoms in this compound. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief lesson. Be sure to click on the subscribe button so you can be notified as soon as new videos are posted. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.